Hola, hello, diagut, salut, and yonaseo. This is Riki from Riki Like Magic, and she be, says hi. Hi, everyone. I'm filming this in the middle of an extremely busy week, so I'm sorry if my energy is a little bit low. But today, today, our topic for today. <laughs> Big question in the title, but basically the idea for the title came from a little of my journey since I came back from Seoul that I want to share with you guys. Because I went through a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff after I came back from Seoul. And a lot of it had to do with purpose and thinking about what I'm doing with my life. <laughs> So it all started when I was three years old. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, so I had been working towards uh, going to Seoul and just experiencing Seoul and seeing if it suited me and my disposition. I had been working for that for about a year and a half. And then when I got back from school, when I got back from Seoul, everything was really different. It was really strange. It was one of the most um, fulfilling things that I had ever done and worked towards. But then the dreams that I had had for myself really shifted like I had this whole plan of what I wanted to do after I came back from Seoul and what was going to happen next and blah, blah blah and then when I came back from Korea I was like I want something slightly different and I don't know what I want but I want something different for my life and I don't know what that dream is but it's different <laughs> so then I went through about a period of a month and a half where I had no idea what I was doing with my life and I know this may sound really weird, but I have never not known what I wanted to do with my life. I know that's not a common thing to say, but I have always had a goal. I've always had an aim. I've always had something to work towards, whether it was getting into my dance degree, doing my dance degree really well, working as a dancer, moving and doing my master's, working on this relationship, working on that and blah, blah, blah. It's just, I've always had something to aim towards. And then it was like going to Seoul and learning Korean and getting my YouTube channel up. And then nothing, nada, not a clue. There was nothing to aim for. I continued to teach and I continued to do my daily life and, and do my jobs and get more work and work on this that, and the other. But when I woke up, I would start to ask myself, what's the point? And I'd never felt like that before. I, I kind of have a string of epiphanies that have happened for me the last couple of months. So epiphany number one was, it's better to have an aim than feel aimless. Now I know that is super, super like boom. But when I was working towards going to Korea, it was some of the most anxious times of my life. And it was extremely difficult and not fun a lot of the time. I had no idea if any of my dreams would work out and anything would happen. And it was a very, very hard, it was a very, very hard time. Having nothing to aim towards was an even harder time. That was mad, very depressing. And I, I, I really didn't, anticipate that whatsoever maybe a little bit of an interlude like the context of me as a person I mean maybe if you've been watching my videos so far you know that I'm an extremely gung-ho person and I don't really stop and I don't really have much of a laid-back go with the flow kind of attitude <laughs> so going with the flow does not work for me and having no nothing to work towards does not work for me and it was really really not fun so that was epiphany number one is having an aim even if that aim drives you insane uh, rhyming is way better than being aimless and feeling purposeless like having an external thing to like work towards and i know in my last video i was talking about having internal goals <laughs> internal intentions so this might seem quite hypocritical but i had neither I had neither an internal goal or an external goal. Feeling purposeless is not fun. Like it's really damaging to your mental health. Well, to my mental health anyway. So then I started to miss the anxiety I felt working towards something. That horrible, anxious butterfly, it's never gonna happen, I'm never gonna be good enough feeling. I started to miss it when it was my least favorite feeling in the world. I started to miss that feeling because it meant I felt like I was working towards something important or it felt like I, I was doing something important and it was fun and satisfying and rewarding and extremely difficult, but really like 
oh, it felt important. My second epiphany was that like, maybe I should start making friends with that anxious feeling and start to understand that that anxious feeling is part of something wonderful that it helps me in a way. I need to temper it and I need to take care of it and I need to make sure it doesn't get out of control, but it is a byproduct of me working towards something really fulfilling. That was my second epiphany. And then I fell down a hole of thoughts as Riki usually does <laughs> and thinking, what do I really want? What's really, what's really going to make me stop feeling bad? What steps do I need to take to make me feel like I have purpose and to make my mental health better? And I did a lot of meditation and I talked to so many friends and I really just held that question every single day and had a lot of talks with people who know me and who really have my best interest at, at heart. And actually, as a side note, I would really recommend everyone have a couple of those people in your life where when you talk to them, you know that your problem is just as interesting to them as if it was their problem. Like they are with you and they're like, yeah, let's fix this together. Let's see how we, how we can help your life. So I did a lot of talking. My number one priority every single day is to put my mental health first and my physical health first. So what I started to realize the deeper and deeper I went inside myself is that my mental health was at its calmest and most healthy. <laughs> when I felt like I was in service to something. And for me, when I feel like I am in service to creativity, then I am at my most calm and I am at my most productive and I'm at my most grounded. Because when I'm thinking about what everybody thinks of me or what I'm doing with my life and what's the point and you know, I need to do this, this and this and I should do this and I should do that and it's not enough and I need to do more, I'm a mess. So instead, I started to try and track when I am most happy and that is when I am just devoting myself to making something or to teaching well or to doing the thing that feels right. And this is where it gets weird, okay? This is where it gets weird because I cannot put into words that feeling because it's a feeling. It's a certain feeling that starts to like vibrate inside me that tells me, no, you're doing something important. You're doing something important. This is important. I just, it's such, a, it's so hard to explain. But when I make something, when I'm teaching something that I find really challenging, when I have to get my kids together to make something, when I see that they're working and that I have to push them and then I have to comfort them and then we have to all celebrate together that they've worked really hard, then like even talking about it, it makes me feel connected and part of something and making my corner of the world a little bit better. But then this is my third epiphany. That feeling doesn't necessarily feel good all of the time. Like that feeling of purpose and fulfillment and reward does not necessarily mean joy and happiness and mojitos on the beach and you're with your friends all the time and it's the best time ever. It doesn't necessarily mean the best time ever. Because for example, I have two projects uh, that I'm doing at the moment and these two projects are stressing me out. But especially the one that I'm a part of at the moment with my teens, it's one of the most fulfilling teaching things that I've ever done because it's extremely difficult, because it's pushing me, because I've never done something like it before and because it feels important. It feels like I'm pushing myself. It feels like I'm getting to that next level in the name of creativity, in the name of making this corner of, of the world a little bit better. But seriously, when I'm planning the lesson plans, I'm sitting there for like an hour and a half, like sweating sweating with masses of butterflies in my stomach with like, I, I can't do this, I, it's, I'm not, it's not right and I won't be able to do it properly. And then, and then it gives me like moments of clarity and moments of extreme satisfaction that I would have never got from sitting on the beach drinking a mojito, you know? So I guess the title of this video is a funny one because I don't have an answer. I don't have an answer for what is your purpose and I don't have an answer for what is the point, but I know that if you listen, that if you really listen and you go about your day and you really listen, because it's not like follow what makes you happy. Of course, you should do things that make you happy and hopefully you have a career in something that makes you happy. But that doesn't necessarily make you happy all the time. Really stressful as well and it's really hard. But for some reason, that's the sweet spot. It's the sweet spot between happy and stress. <laughs> reward and exhaustion and feeling like you're doing something important. I'm not saving lives here. I'm teaching a dance class. 
but it makes sense to me. It makes sense to my entire makeup. It just makes sense that I am adding something to this world. Personally, I think if everybody did that listening and then was very, very smart about aligning their life that way, we would have a much happier community. <laughs> oh. You can unsubscribe now because I know that went somewhere, but I'm really, I had a really hard time the last two months, really, really hard time of having not a clue what was going on. And I'm still in search of that thing that I want to aim for, that high goal that's gonna get me even further. But all the listening that I've done has made me dive head first into creativity without being afraid of it anymore. It's just made me meet my work head on and I've noticed a real change. I've noticed I have more energy. I've noticed I have more focus because I'm not afraid of the important feeling it gives me anymore. I'm not afraid of that big feeling that I am part of something. I'm part of a network of other people who are just trying their best to add to creativity. And that big feeling of like, <gasps> this is important, that doesn't scare me as much anymore. And I've really noticed a difference in my mental health because of that. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it there. I'm just gonna leave it there and let me know what you think without being too cruel. <laughs> Thank you for listening. If you got the whole way through, fair play if you got the whole way through. I hope this helped or sparked some thoughts or listening in you. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you can like, you can subscribe, you can ring the little bell that gives you all the notifications. You can share it with your friends and you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat. Remember, you are who you choose to be and you are part of something bigger and deeper than yourself. And she be the